Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, it was my premiere today to do, uh, you have seen the different banners. And I'm very pleased today that we have a great guest. Of course, everybody know Annalyn Lennart. Who could be a better star than today's guest? And I am very, very pleased that Annalyn made her time and she is able to be only for one hour, unfortunately, today with us. But I will be very glad to bring her in. I think that not better introduction than her playing and wonderful performance was just now made. And you can see that her whole Czechone by um, Johann Sebastian van Bach, you can see on the link of the YouTube, which you just can see on the banner, which is just going on the screen. And I would like now to bring in our guest, Annalyn Lennart. Hello, Annalyn. How are you? It's working. I hope you oh, yeah, no, I can hear you. I was afraid that your mic is off. No, it's great to see you, Annalyn. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much for, you. for making time for us. It's Thank lovely to see you. The invitation. As you said already, and I mentioned now to the public, uh, that you have unfortunately no time because you have to move the harp and you have some kind of other uh, now schedule. To no do time is a little bit exaggerated, I think, but we have an hour. An hour I didn't, um, it's a little bit busy because we didn't expect that um, we would still be able to do a life exams after the whole corona crisis so I'm in Maastricht now since yesterday where I'm trying to um, you know teach life and yes because the school has crazy restrictions there are some practical issues that I still have to take care of today so so I apologize. <laughs> no, it's fine. Only Annalyn, may I ask you to go a little bit into the middle of the screen because otherwise I, I have there always the logo and it was on your head, which is not okay. <laughs> it's better. A little it's bit. Really nice to have it on your head. <laughs> yes. You can see Annalyn is a really really shining girl, shining lady. I mean, I of course know her since she was very little, but she was always really making a great atmosphere great energy and she's really we have been laughing a lot all the time and i am i am sorry we cannot show you today maybe we will but it has been always a very very funny time to have together but we, we always forgot to take a picture together i, I... <laughs> <laughs> you know that's but i found some of yeah i found some. Okay. Yeah, so i have some but mainly we need to of course uh, know something about you what you can tell to us so main 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 question of mine is always at the beginning how did you come to play the harp because your parents are not musician and i know that your brother is a composer so how did you come to play the harp how did you find this instrument <laughs> good question um well it's true that my parents are not musicians uh, and i have a brother and a sister and we all started uh, with piano my parents just always gave us opportunities to try different things. So we all started with piano, they played the saxophone, and somehow um, we had a 
very good wind orchestra in the little town that I'm from. And the conductor wanted to go big and make it a symphonic wind orchestra with cellos and a harp. And when I was about to decide my second instrument, which was first clarinet or oboe, he said, I think you should play the harp. And I literally had never seen or heard a harp in my life before. The only thing I heard was that you get calluses on your fingers. And as a little girl, I was not impressed. I was, I remember the conductor calling my parents, she should play the harp. And I was standing there at the phone, no, no harp. So because I was, it was not a, not, not a good first impression because I had absolutely no idea. Um, but I think at the, at the end for me, it was the most important thing was to make music, to be able to be part of an ensemble. And I, didn't know how that would be with the harp, but I, if it would have been piano, harp, or oboe, I just wanted to play the music. And of course, I love the harp now, but it was just, um, it's not like a love story where I've seen the harp in a ballet and I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> so it has been actually chosen for you. It has not been chosen by you. Yes, and I'm actually really grateful because this teacher apparently mm -hmm. um, really wanted the harpist and, and thought, I would be good at it. So I'm grateful that he saw things that um, me and also not my parents would have ever thought of or seen. And I'm grateful to my parents that they wanted to support, you know, mm -hmm. carrying a harp, buying a new car, etc. I think many people can relate to that story. Yeah. And you had a big harp from the very beginning or did you have a little harp? No, I had like a Celtic harp um, for a year, which mm -hmm. was, I think it was from tai Taiwan. It, It was, uh, yeah, it was a, so I had it for one year and then I sw switched to the, to the pedal harp. I have the picture somewhere. I have to, uh, I have to find it out afterwards, yeah, but I can't you now find it crazy, crazy me. Uh, anyway, um, I think it's here, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, yeah. that was the, the, my first door. Yeah, that was the little harp I had. So how old have you been at that moment? I started when, with the harp when I was nine, so it's not very, very young, but like normal age in Belgium, I would say. Um, so yeah, it was, um, yeah, it's really fun <laughs> to do that again. <laughs> And Liv was your first teacher who brought you the, the, the hands on the strings. Of course, yeah. So the, the other, the next step was, of, I have to learn the harp. There was no teacher in our mm -hmm. area. So in our province, where, where I come from, there were only two places at the time. Um, so then it happened to be that I came to the school of Lieve Robrooks, which has been a very good uh, teacher. She gave me a very solid uh, technique, was always very good in preparing me. Uh, there she is. <laughs> Um, mentally, I've learned a lot of things from her. So, so I was lucky to, to go, um, you know, to be there. But it was a, a coincidence too, because now nowadays you can basically learn the harp in every town in Belgium. Mm -hmm. But there we really had to, to search for a place. Um, mm -hmm. where... But you were really lucky because, of course, you were talented. But to, to have the first teacher as a good one who yeah, really... Yeah has such a support and uh, you have a support from her. She was really like your mother. She was everywhere, as I remember, with you really everywhere. You were traveling. She was like, yeah, you were always there. It's true. Very, very mm -hmm. true. Because mm -hmm. as I said, my parents were not musicians. So they, of course, they wanted the best for me, but they were not able to judge if I was mm -hmm. talented or not. And if mm -hmm. Liva said, apparently she's talented. So my parents had the trust in her. Mm -hmm. to go with it but if she mm -hmm. wouldn't have you know not every teacher is the same you know some teachers will maybe see a talent but will not maybe engage or not do something with it but she really um said that this is my responsibility now and i want to make the best of it and she from the first year that i was playing the harp she sent me to all possible competitions like like that that i didn't even realize what i was doing on stage mm -hmm. so she always gave me so many experiences she was always there um exactly um, guiding me she was there when I had competitions master classes so absolutely yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that very beginning which is the most important yeah. absolutely absolutely and uh, this is already with the bigger harp you had uh, when did you yeah. get the bigger harp that's actually the the, the harp of Liva because I was she wanted me to um, 
you know, start try the pedal harp to try mm-hmm. after one year of the Celtic. And also, I was also playing a piece in the orchestra, which wasn't chromatically possible on the Celtic mm-hmm. harp, but we borrowed. So that was my first for, first go on a big pedal harp. Mm-hmm. That's lovely. But you owned your pe- first pedal harp when you were how old? Um, well, it's all connected to, to this very beginning. The orchestra that I, you know, so the conductor that told me you have to play the harp, he said, if what, you start to learn... Can you say the the name of that man? Uh, his name is really Franzen. I think he he his, the harp is chasing him because every time I do an interview and I say why do you play the harp, he's mentioned. I think he could never imagine. <laughs> um, but so he said, if you and the orchestra said, if you want to start the harp, we will buy as an orchestra the instrument, which mm-hmm. was amazing. So I didn't have to buy a big instrument myself um, at the very beginning. Um, but I was able to, like, with my first little incomes from concerts, to pay it back gradually. So that's how it's. Huh. How it's that's fun. But honestly, because you are now the principal harpist of the Vienna Philharmonic, to start so early, as 10 years old probably already, to have the experience in the orchestra, it was a great gift for you. You maybe, of course, at that time you have probably not even realized what a gift it is for for a young child to just flow into it like like natural yeah. swimming. You know? It's true, and I, it, you know, it was a wind orchestra, so there were mm-hmm. often, of course, we played a lot of symphonic transcriptions with original harp parts. But very often, I would, I would play the, the, the you know, xylophone part just to, but it was just to be part of it, to to join, mm-hmm. to learn how to listen to each other. Absolutely, probably mm-hmm. without realizing, I've, I've learned a mm-hmm. lot. More. There. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. And your uh, after, what was your first competition which you won as a child? I mean, before you really started to do it professionally. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think it was uh, the Felix Godefroy competition in Belgium, which is great because it has it still exists and it has, um, you know, every division like different age categories. Mm-hmm. So it was wonderful because you can really send people of a certain age. Um, you know, and different Godefroy pieces as a as an obligatory piece um, mm-hmm. for each division. So I think that that was the first. I I still remember. Of course, I didn't speak French at the time. That I had absolutely no idea that I won when they announced it, and I was just you know <laughs> drinking Coca Cola. <laughs> and... <laughs> I can Do you remember until now what was the program there, or what did you play there? No, I actually don't. I, I, sorry, I, I should have prepared. I, I don't no, remember. No, no. It's spontaneous, you know, so it's only yeah. come to questions like to my no. mind. The thing is that because I was always really well prepared, thanks to Liva, there are many pieces that I can still, or from the Junior Lee Laskin competition, I can still mm-hmm. almost play by heart today because, uh, you know, like a romance by Parish Alvarez, which was obligatory. I mean, I can still see the notes from my first competition, but I can't remember the piece. I'm really sorry to... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But uh, this was, of course, a first step of the professional competition, yeah. which you have done. And then you have uh, jumped into the studying um, higher. You were, I'm pleased to say that you were one of my students from the beginning when yeah. I started to teach at the Brussels Conservatory. So you were doing uh, the class in my... Uh, my school, and then after you went to Brass, uh, to Paris to mm-hmm. study also with Isabel Perron, and uh, that was a long but very short at the same time period of time because you were a very at, at that time you were very successful. Before you started to study with me, you won the competition in Lille Laskin. There I was in the jury, and I wanted to also find the pictures. I was really going through the so me big too. pictures. Me too. I, me I, and even on the website of the Lila Skin, it used to be there, but I found mm-hmm. only that they replaced the picture with the CD cover that I was able to make as a prize. Yeah. But I sadly also didn't find, because I know they were there, and I'm sorry, I'm because I'm not at home, I don't have my... Um, photo but it's true. I, I I was 18 when I won the Lila Skin, and you were in the jury, and yeah. I it was at the moment when I was deciding where to go uh, after. So mm-hmm. it was a fantastic surprise that then you came. Like it was literally in two months' time, I think. Mm-hmm. So I was so happy that I could study with you and stay in my own country at the same time. So it was really really great. But it's true. It, it was only three years. 
<laughs> with laughing. <laughs> <laughs> But the great years, really, it was wonderful. I found only the picture when I invited my students to come to Prague to, to perform for my mother's 75th birthday. So I only found this one, and you are the one on the right side in the blue dress. Yeah. And uh, yeah, my mom, I bought her 75 white roses. That's so amazing. this is the only picture I found. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a beautiful memory. I I always kept that. It was so beautiful the trips that we made uh, to to Prague with the with the class, and it, those memories stay. It's really really yeah. special. It was great. It was wonderful, and all my, also the audience they remember up to these days that concert incredibly because it was the first time some something like that happened that the students came to to play in Prague, and it was really wonderful. So thank you so much for this, and of course yeah. because. For bringing us, and I. But the, the only thing I regret after, I mean, not regret, but I remember we went to a festival in Ost Ostrava, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, also with the harp class, and I cannot believe after many years why on earth I would play my first ever model in the Czech Republic. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I remembered late, much later how when I realized the importance of this piece, why. Exactly, and honestly, also the Chacon that you were studying still in in Brussels when you were uh, with me, and I also found the music still at home, you know, from from that time. It was so like I just, for the competition, yes, from the exactly, exactly. No, it was. Uh, I mean, it it has been great time, and of course, I'm so glad that we were part of of that family. Absolutely, also, yeah. you know. Yeah. And because this was one of the many competitions you have won, and then just after two years later, you got the position in Vienna, which changed totally your life because you had to move to to Vienna to Austria. Tell us so that I'm not talking. Tell us more about the audition because it oh, will be. I'm interesting. happy to listen. It's really fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like so stressed because I know that time is flying and you have little time, and I want just that you are it's going fine. to speak. <laughs> No, it's true. It, 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 I, to be honest, I never really made the realization of wanting to go in an orchestra. I mean, I enjoyed playing in orchestras for sure. And I, I was lucky enough to, after the ARD competition in Munich, that I was invited a lot to go and play there. So I got the taste to work with amazing conductors like Maris Janssons. And mm -hmm. it was just at that time, I think, that Xavier decided uh, to leave the orchestra. And he mentioned it to me, um, mm -hmm. even though I, I, I have no personal real connection i was never his student so he it was i was really appreciative that he just mentioned because otherwise i would have never checked like the the online advertisements of uh, auditions because i was just not into you know it was i was happy doing chamber music solo concert which was going well at the time um but i was really really lucky that um somehow i gave it a go and yeah then you don't. You never expect to win an audition like that, um, especially because there was also a lot of opera repertoire which I had never played mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. and it was a short amount of time that I was able to prepare. So I think maybe the good thing was that the audition came at a time where I was really busy, um, had not too much time to think about it, and I thought because it's behind the screen. Um, I felt nobody knows me. If it doesn't go well, I go back to Belgium. <laughs> It's so I didn't have the pressure. I just saw it as an experience, and I think that that's also what helped me through the. Through the and of course, the realization comes um, now. I have to move to Vienna, and I had no also no connection with with really with the city. I didn't speak the language, um, so yeah, of course, it was amazing and a fantastic new new chance. Um, and I have to say, the first year was very tough. Because uh, I don't know if many people know, but it's like you have the Vienna Philharmonic, but that's first of all, we are the Vienna State Opera Orchestra, which plays another opera every night. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember in my trial year, which goes from September to June, I had 45 different operas to play without rehearsing because they don't rehearse. So <laughs> There is no time. There is no time. <laughs> the opera is it's a repertoire system, so you so all the people that have been playing for years they know it. And you of course now if I have to go and play Tosca, I know it very well. So it's great because you mm -hmm. become much more flexible. You get to know things differently, like in a chamber music way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, so getting through the trial year was 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 
hard. And then on top of that, the Vienna Philharmonic repertoire. But then the, the trial year was over and then you realize now I'm in a different country. Now my life starts here. So then, mm -hmm. oh, then the realization came. But I have to say, I've, I've learned so much. I've, I'm really grateful for this opportunity just to grow also as a musician, which you cannot do only by yourself playing mm -hmm. solo chamber music repertoire. I think just how you produce sound, how you how you engage with different musicians. I think that you can only learn in the orchestra. So Absolutely. I'm really grateful. Absolutely. It's different, different uh, perspective suddenly. It's different view because you have also very different repertoire immediately, which you could not play as a soloist and you see yeah. suddenly everything very differently. And you feel the sound around you and it's just so, so beautiful and you just want to reproduce somehow a little bit of the same. Absolutely. Do you remember what was on the audition when you did it? Oof, uh, it's like blackout. Uh, Tigan for sure, a lot of Wagner, Tannhauser, Valkyrie, mm -hmm. uh, Lulu, Alban Berg. Um, mm -hmm. As solo pieces, I remember it was the, the this, um, C.P. Bach sonata. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Britain, uh, Sweet or Hindemith. Mm -hmm. uh, so those were the solo solo pieces. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of opera, oh, Philharmonic, uh, Berlioz for sure. What else did I play? It was. Um, I mean standards. But how many how many stages was it? In the first stage, you certainly did not play everything. No, no. But the, so the, the system in in uh, Vienna and maybe also in other orchestras is that you cannot enter the main audition if you don't have an orchestra job already, which mm -hmm. meant that I had to do the pre audition the day before, <laughs> with I don't know how many people. So I I passed. I think we were only one or two passing from that pre audition to the mm -hmm. main audition, which was the next day. Mm -hmm. And then that day, I think we had um, four rounds, yeah. Wow. And in the last round was Debussy or something like that uh, as a solo, solo? Or there was only... Uh, no, okay. yeah, no, I think they made me play the whole Bach at the end, which mm -hmm. I didn't consciously prepare because I thought they will stop me after. <laughs> <laughs> and I was hoping that they would stop me, but they didn't. So yeah, on the last round, it was a lot of solo again. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. And what was your first concert with the Philharmonic? Do you remember what did you play as the first concert with them? It was Daphne and Chloe. It was immediately like a trip mm -hmm. to the Bern Festival and Montreux, I remember. So it was a lot of Glissandi and French repertoire. <laughs> uh, yeah, which was, I mean, it's it's amazing because you immediately you learn so much repertoire and absolutely it's been, a, it's been a roller coaster for sure and of course as even it's very busy you are three harpists officially who is changing everything like with uh, charlotte balzerai and uh, what is known pop vladimir pop ladislav pop yes yeah, so, uh, well it used to be three official harpists but mm -hmm. sadly uh, a few years ago uh, the third position changed into a uh, a stage harpist because in Vienna mm -hmm. we have as an opera orchestra a lot of stage music obviously which is a separate orchestra so he's uh, the harpist mm -hmm. there and of course he's our first substitute but sadly we're only two people covering everything so only two of you like this uh, officially it's only the two of us yes exactly so. it's <laughs> well, and this well, is <laughs> I was really searching and trying to find everything, but I thought that maybe will be connected to the interview. So this is in uh, in Hamburg, right? Exactly in the Alp Philharmonie. Mm -hmm. I remember we played the opening concert there with the Philharmonic, which is really nice. And it's always I'm really lucky. I think you are too to have a wonderful colleague uh, mm -hmm. that we get along so well, and I so important. You know, we mm -hmm. yeah, just support each other and have a good atmosphere. So I'm really happy. Absolutely, absolutely. And before we will go on, on your information, I will uh, also, because we have many people who are with us, which I would like to thank very much that you are with us. So I will very quickly put only the mes messages on the screen so that you can see who everything is there with us. And I greet everybody so that everybody can read it and just that you wow. know, it's lovely really from all of you. 
to be with us and we are a little bit in a hurry today so i'm so sorry that it seems to be everything speeding up but i don't want to miss anything so if there is any question you want to ask annaline please don't hesitate to to go on and write it there i think that, that there is a question um, <laughs> question <laughs> yes so <laughs> what do you advise <laughs> uh, audition training uh in the orchestra i think it's so i mean i know you know also teaching a lot of orchestra parts that it's not always the most for students the interesting work because they don't they see it as a technical hurdle to take mm -hmm. uh, and not so much as a musical approach and i think that's so important because of course the parts are asked out of a technical aspect just to see if you can manage them but if you approach them that way i i don't think you can like function as well at the edition i think you have to really prepare well uh, go and listen to the repertoire which style is there which sound quality is there uh, what is the character of the piece that you want to you know share and if you go into that and see the parts in that hole, I think it's a completely different approach. But I, I think it's a sad thing that the audition training often is seen too technical. It's music mm -hmm. that we're playing, and so many parts are just a joy to play them in the orchestra, and they should feel the same. So of course, you you have to prepare as well as you can for mm -hmm. sure. Practice technically, but then don't forget the musical side. But don't you think, Annaline, that it always depends on the kind of orchestra because you never know what the orchestra is looking for. And sometimes, uh, as far as I know, when uh, they're not looking for music, I mean, yeah, I know. But the problem is that sometimes the the orchestra they are when you play the orchestra parts, they said like it should be played like the orchestra and not put there something like that you look like oh, a very big soloist. What I heard sometimes, you know, so that it's very difficult because some of the orchestras really wants to see that you are personality and that you can put something by yourself. But some of the orchestra, they just, no, no, she's too much the soloist. She cannot yes, play like Of course, but it's with everything the same. I think there is a given, there is a musical given with a, a mm -hmm. character, a style, a pulse. So it's... Mm -hmm. always can be a challenge to be free and show a personality within this so you know that's a challenge but that's what makes great musicians so i think absolutely yeah. absolutely and you as you were mentioning you are teaching at the moment also for now recently a few years yeah. ago you started to teach in maastricht where you are now at the moment as well and yeah. the school has not finished yet in maastricht no well i have like think many other people and you too teaching online only for the last few months, which I was surprised mm -hmm. about because it was better than expected. And it was nice to follow up with the mm -hmm. students. But, I mean, everybody had a difficult time. It's not easy. Um, but I had one um, master two student um, who decided she and she had the opportunity to do her exam still live. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to happen tomorrow. So that's why I came here yesterday to to it. I mean, it's still a completely different thing to teach live. And I'm really happy to see my students mm -hmm to you know to to do what i can and just to be back also in this nice place so yes it's, it's, it's good it's that you do life again because that's what we study for yeah indeed and it's lucky that we can finally a little bit go to the life like teaching as well that's fantastic and you had concerts with the students yesterday as far yeah, as i know yeah, because i said uh, that it's really courageous after all of this time playing in front of your you know screen and your comfortable environment of home that you get so used to in all those months so i wanted to not uh, risk the feeling that would be strange to perform mm -hmm. in front of real people mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that are moving and breathing in front of you uh, so yeah we had a tryout concert yesterday so it was really nice to and we are coming in uh, in two minutes into the session when I will bring in also winners of the of the quizzes, which has finished with the end of, of June. But we have three people who will be with us today. I hope three. We have still only one prepared on the screen who I will bring in very soon. But because it's still not half past five, I will still ask one more question. Because, of course, you are a laureate. You are a winner of a prize, which was now recently... It was not a harp prize, but it was a prize which is even um, maybe more prestigious because it's a classical for the recording. You oh. have done the recording of, of Nino Rota. Okay. And 
And uh, I would love, of course, if you can speak a little bit about it after we will make all these all these okay. guests here, yeah. so that you know what I will ask afterwards. I will just only show here is a uh, wait a second. I have to find it. It's so many pictures. I have here. I found the picture when you were showing the <laughs> the cover of. I have to be enthusiastic about it. <laughs> it's a gorgeous picture and it exactly shows your energy and your your spirit so this is the uh, the cd which got the prize and of course we have here also the prize winner here we are yeah, with the a very strange award but i'm really happy with it <laughs> <laughs> tell me what, what is it what what is it like is it sculpture or what is it yes, it's like a kind of statue which of course has the name opus classic um and I probably keep it the wrong way because it has like a beautiful. It's like it's like a microphone basically. So it's oh, yes. it doesn't look like that. <laughs> Certainly, yeah, it is. I've gotten this comment before, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will speak more about all these uh, projects which you have done. So it will be really nice. And we have already two of our guests. So I will bring in the first one, and it's my big pleasure to. Bring in Maria. I think that this is the youngest guest we have ever had. Hello, Maria. <laughs> First of all, congratulate you for getting this prize. And certainly that you got such a great guest today to ask. And because we are in a very short time, please ask quickly question and Anna even certainly ask you. And I will go out of the screen to leave you alone. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I am very happy to meet you. Andelin. Well, I'm also really happy to meet you. What do you like more? To record mu music or to play live concerts? I think I prefer to play live concerts. Uh, recording is a beautiful memory of live music, but it's it's still so much better to be on stage and have a direct con contact with the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My second question. Are you kind or strict teacher? A kind or strict teacher? I think maybe you have to ask my students. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Maria, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Jana. Take care. <laughs> Greetings. Bye bye. <laughs> So that's lovely, isn't it? It's so good. <laughs> and we have another one here. We have Natalia Smetana. Hello, Natalia. Beautiful name. Hello. Yeah, indeed. Hello, Natalia. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. As you might have seen, we have very little time. So please ask quickly and uh, Annalene will, of course, answer you. I will go out of the screen now. Hello, how are you? Hello, uh, hello. This pleasure to meet you. I am not musician. I am just mom of my daughter who plays by heart. Uh, plays harp. <laughs> Understand? No. Who plays a harp? I didn't hear it. Daughter. Daughter you plays. Hear me. The daughter. Uh, plays the, harp. the daughter. Your daughter plays the harp. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Thank you. My question to me. Can you listen to me? Oh, the, the connection is actually getting stuck a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, Sometimes I can hear you. You can hear me. Now we can hear you. Please try, mm. to, uh, try to repeat your question, please. My question, yes. I a winning a win uh, of all categories uh, the competition of Radefroa. Uh, all yes. And uh, I I have I have a question about your repertoire uh, okay. to this competition. How do you choose this repertoire? Did you choose pieces a bit more difficult? Um, than your group mates and uh, who was choosing the program for uh, you for your uh, competition you mean for the god of war competition 
Yes, yes. Uh, this year uh, we are going to participate at the uh, it was consult and uh, I was uh, uh, I want to ask you about your participation in the when you was uh, young well, child could... of course when I was uh, young and doing this competition I, I I was lucky to have the great guidance of my my teacher who helped me with the program and the God of War competition is very nice because it has uh, usually only one or two obligatory pieces and the rest is free, which means you can construct a really nice program and also show show your strength, show your musicality, you know, so I think it's definitely important to, to choose pieces that are good for you, but also make a good program so that you choose a lot of variety, not to have, you know, a complete romantic program. Always try to show that you can handle different styles and you know that the program is really balanced. I think this is very important because you, they give you the freedom of, you know, being flexible with it. I think it's great that you can show that you, um, you know, you can work with different different styles, different. Yeah. Yes. No, understand. Uh, understand. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye, bye, Natalia. Thank you. Bye. I'm so sorry for the connection. Of course, we never oh, know no, how you never know. You never know. Yeah. And I have the sun in my. my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it everything okay? We have one more. We have Oksana Kulik. So, welcome, Oksana. Hello. Hello, Oksana. Can you see us? Hey, nice to meet you. Okay. Great to see and you. my question is um, maybe for you. What? Both. Um, how do you think uh, how important for so to have a manager and what part of work can do a soloist uh, by yourself organize concerts or uh, take part in festivals or it's better to have a manager and you only practice and another another person organized everything for you it's a very good question because it's it's not always easy in the in the musician life professional life me personally many years i didn't think of the importance of having a manager because i was focusing on you know doing what i do as good as i could and things were coming from that but at a certain point i realized that it is important to have someone represent you but it has to be someone that really knows you well, that works for you in the best way, so that it can be just makes you look stronger. But of course, the work that you put out there, you have to do yourself. So I think even if you have a manager or if you don't have a manager, I think it's so important to always, um, you know, be clear on the goals that you want to have. Because even if you have a manager, you have to be clear about what you want to achieve, what you want to reach, um, plans you have, repertoire or your strength that you want to put out, because they will just do the administration side of it, maybe. So I think the strengths come always from you, yourself, even if you have one or not. So I think it's really important. And this is also what I, I try to tell my students that it's so important to find yourself your strength to make your your strength special and out there and then things will come and fall into place but don't depend everything on another person even though it can be very very helpful of course to have a teacher, for sure i hope that is somehow okay. helpful <laughs> oksana thank you very much i would of course, absolutely okay. agree what what uh, Annalyn said. It's totally and in these days certainly because uh, when I was uh, in age of Annalyn, I I have never had any uh, any of the uh, of the manager. I have never had any agency. I had a manager and agency only since I was twenty eight years old, and uh, then I was in in Germany, and it was of course a big help. But of course, if as Annalyn said, if the agency or the manager doesn't know too much about our instrument which is actually very difficult okay. uh, it's very uh, it's actually not help because uh, it's only stopping you because you have to explain everything it needs to be really someone who first of all trusts you 
and secondly really understand the the instrument and trust to the instrument also which is very important because sometimes they have to be sure that they will also get to the point that the promoter say can say well the harp we had here once the harp and it was not so interesting and the the manager has to be the one who will say but you should take that person because this is different and if the manager doesn't understand it he cannot he cannot go through that so that's very important so you have to be strong enough as Annaline said to go for your goals by yourself and have someone who will trust you and be helping you to go into your level which you want to achieve so well, good luck with everything okay thank you <laughs> take care Oksana. bye bye Hi. yeah I'm so glad that it worked, even if the connection a little bit. I'm sorry that the connection was a little bit uh, out, but That's it was. Nobody's fault. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much interesting questions i mean that's that's a very good one because it's a very tricky thing in our world and Absolutely. times are changing so much i think you know every, everybody's under pressure to showcase themselves especially you know being in a digital time with internet instagram mm -hmm. i mean i like i mean i know that i i don't really like to to post a lot of things but i know i have to because it's important it's part of it but it takes energy i mean you know about people because you're very good at it and it takes time it takes energy to you know to be out there but it's so it's also so stressful because everybody can do it you know yeah. so so it's a lot of pressure for people nowadays and for also organizations and and, and audiences to to take everything in what is being offered i think it's um it's exactly. a really good time yeah it's uh, it's not easy time for the young generation at the moment honestly uh, as i can be really open and i don't care who whatever say, think about me but honestly now sometimes the the art is going away because uh, everybody can make the promotion Absolutely. and sometimes and sometimes uh, unfortunately someone is better in the promotion of nothing and of course uh, the one who is really good hardly can go maybe through because the people sometimes unfortunately don't even now recognize what is really good and what is not good so yeah. that's but that, that's a general problem of our society yeah. i think so because everything yeah. is open and and just the, the the ability to judge and to see real value sometimes mm -hmm. it's disappearing behind you know everything that's flashy quick beautiful i mean it's it's not about that and i really really hope that we can go back to the core at some point maybe this crisis will help us to do that a little bit i mean even though it's cliche but maybe maybe it can change yeah no it will be because of course in the past i guess that it was nice that really only the music speak and yeah. it was like that uh, there was no i not possible there was really necessary to be the manager who is able to do these things as oksana asked because he had time to go everywhere and to speak about you and now in these days but also the artist had time to focus only on making only music. exactly because the artists were really doing their job and, and they you know, feel that you have to be accountant you have to you know be a web designer you have to be there's so many things that come to us so i think it's so important not to lose yourself but just to to not do it because everybody else is doing but find your strength and what you're good at without comparing too much because this never brings brings the solution so it's it's not easy it's tough absolutely i totally agree with you because i think that the art is the art and i think that we really should uh, do our job and of course well i should not talk you should talk but i would like to know Annalyn, about uh, about the project with the with the nino rota if you can say how it came in how did you make this idea to do this project and you with whom did you pro or, uh, cooperate on it and all the things how it came to well <laughs> um well I've, I've been really lucky to since um the first recording i did with harp concertos um mm -hmm. to have signed a contract with warner classics um and then you know the first idea was what do we do are we going to do another orchestra cd what is the best now to you know to to bring out because I had just done three harp concertos, which was amazing already with orchestra. I mean, because it's not these days not so easy to make recordings. So I was they were really interested in the Rota concerto, but of course you don't want to make again a mishmash of 
another you know list of concertos um and rota i think is a really we know him from from the classical side because he has such a beautiful sarabande and toccata or he has the harp concerto which is not so well known actually mm -hmm. uh, or the sonata for flute and harp so we know his classical side but the main public knows him mainly from his movies and doesn't even realize that he has written more classical music than film repertoire so the idea came that we really focus on him as a composer but of course we don't have film music from him so it was really a joint idea to bring in the film music to showcase him as a you know his whole portrait um, and have transcriptions from the film music for harp and strings which then can also be used you know for future concerts because harp and strings we need repertoire so um so yeah i'm really happy that somehow um people have appreciated the um, the idea of, of uh, you know showcasing him as a composer not just classical not just film but just you know who he was um and i think he's, he's a very special man so I'm, I'm, i was really i'm really thrilled to 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 learn that i was you know, selected in different categories already for the prize. Even just to be nominated for me was enough. It's like, you know, the Oscars and you don't have to win, but you have nominations. Um, so yeah, I was really, really, really happy to have received the Opus Classic, even though it's a strange award, but it's beautiful. <laughs> I will show it again to those who came a little bit later to see that wonderful girl with, with the wonderful prize. And Annalyn, have you, have you work or have you at least contacted Elena Zaniboni for whom most of the Nino Rota species has been written? Well, yeah, I know her and I've been in touch actually with his um, um, producer and I've received some, um, um, you know, handwritten music of him. So there has been definitely, but I have not been able to reach her that sadly, no. Um, but I mean, of course, his music is now open to, I, I would have loved to, because there's so, so little known about him. I, I was lucky enough to, to have a conversation with, with Ricardo Muti like two weeks ago, because he came to Vienna and he, he, it was his composition teacher. Um, and he said, you know, he could play Wozzeck. Oh, wow, you found that as well. <laughs> um, so it was his um, composition teacher and he said he could play Wozzeck by heart just to show what a brilliant mind Rota was. And it was because of him that Muti only just, you know, mm. wanted to go and become a musician. So I think this side of, of, of Rota, many people don't know. So and I'm, mm -hmm. I, I hope I get the chance to, to speak with her about her experiences, of course. Mm -hmm. It would be certainly very nice. Also, when she will get your recording, I hope she will. Yeah, would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so be great. Again, again, we can all meet again. I, I will write her. I will certainly yeah, write her about it. And really nice. Thank you. Oh. And Annalyn, what is your next project now? Of course, you certainly got some uh, other uh, proposals because this project was done with the Brussels, Con uh, Brussels Conservatory. Sorry, it is the collection Brussels Philharmonic. <laughs> Uh, uh, Brussels Philharmonic, not so far away. <laughs> <laughs> and who was the, who was the conductor? Uh, Andrien Perrouchon. It's hard to thank you for letting me pronounce it. Um, he's a wonderful young French um, um, conductor that is a percussionist uh, and he has exp had experience in, in Paris in the orchestra. But he was a wonderful accompanist um, for the CD. Mm -hmm. um, it is always tricky to make recordings and this short time orchestra time is limited so you really have you need someone that um, you know just can focus go to the point mm -hmm. and hopefully get it together as soon as possible. And you, did, you did by Rocha with the orchestra the concerto plus the godfather or only the concerto? Uh, the concerto and then all the film music which was yeah godfather uh, romeo mm -hmm. and juliet dead on the nile um, so there were a few that we did with the orchestra mm -hmm. um yeah and then i had a separate recording with with emmanuel Pahu for the chamber music and the sarabande and toka so it was two different two different days two different holes too yeah that's fantastic. I will I will go through some of the photos, not some. I will go through the photos. So you can say a little bit about it, of course. This is with your maestro. Do you play many concerts with him? Uh, Duda Marias, he comes uh, very regularly with us. And that was actually taken right after the New Year's concert in Vienna. Exactly. Um, it was this year. That was 
no, this year, no, it was two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you play the, the the New Year concert always by you, or is it you change and the harpist? That's a very good question because I've gotten a lot of, of comments because normally we change, we alternate. So every mm -hmm. year, so one time it's me, one year it's Charlotte, but she managed to get pregnant every year that I was supposed to be free, like three times. She has three kids now. So every I didn't year, know, I didn't know. Yes. It's What a surprise! I have discovered. It's really funny because I've then played all of a sudden ever since I started for five years in a row, mm -hmm. uh, and then when she came back, people were texting me, "What happened? Are you not in Vienna? Are you okay?" So I'm really happy that you you bring this up because of course normally we alternate, but she just was always, you know, in the my beginning years when mm -hmm. I it was her turn, she just got another baby. <laughs> Oh, that's so wonderful. It's wonderful, but it just happened that that's yeah. why people think I only play the New Year's concert, which is definitely not the case. She will play oh. the next one. <laughs> Please give her my best regards and really congratulations. I have not been in contact with her very, very, yeah. very long time. Well, she's very busy. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Three kids. My goodness, that's amazing. But she can still play even she has kids or she's now on the maternity? She is in, uh, still now on maternity leave. She will come mm -hmm. back I think, in September. The good thing mm -hmm. is in Austria, you can really take, uh, you know, she will. She had a one year to stay at yeah. home with the, with the yeah. baby. So she will come in September again. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so and now I have a, a picture here. You were in Mexico. <laughs> well, you went through my... Uh, <laughs> it was on the a, a great tour of the of the Vienna mm -hmm. Philharmonic to South mm -hmm. America. This was in Mexico. It's I mean it's if you think about it, it's just amazing. I mean you know this too. It's so wonderful to be able mm -hmm. to make music to but still visit this place okay. within the world because you, you wouldn't always have the possibility to travel there yourself. So yeah, absolutely, that's cool. wonderful. Here it is with Helga Stork with the glass in our hand, of course. <laughs> That's fantastic. Where where was that? That was I think two year to the, December two thousand eighteen. I think I I organized a, a little harp festival in Vienna. Mm -hmm. and it was I mean she was so kind to come and, and attend the whole weekend. So and we had a drink. I had a recital. I think the the first evening and yeah we had a. I mean she's her energy is amazing. Um, so. And she's based in Munich, right? She's based in Munich, so it was not far. <laughs> Yes, I think she she lives in Munich, right? Yes. Yeah. And here we have wonderful people next to you also yeah. now. So it's really great to we have Mariko we had just now recently yeah. a few days ago on the interview and Emmanuel Sassan. I have asked him to come to the interview. I even tried today once more to to convince him to come and I have not got any answer yet. So I really hope he will he will accept it because he had some issues not to be able to accept it before. So I hope now it comes. But uh, it was in New York when you were visiting. What yeah. was it? Ooh, when was that? Uh, three or four years ago, I think. And Marika, Marika was so kind to to invite me to do a master class at the Manhattan School of Music. And mm -hmm. Emmanuel came, and it was really amazing to see him because I hadn't seen him for a long time since he moved to the states. So it was a, a beautiful surprise, just right in front of the Met that we met. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you met in front of the Met. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and here it's you and. You know, I found this picture on the Facebook, of course, and where was your comment? To uh, too many choices today. <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, I had a, a little tour with for the Rota um, mm -hmm. CD with string quartet in September. Um, and oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting messages. I don't want them to be in sound. Um, quick messages, yes. Good that I know how to do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, I was, the, that was my dressing room. Um, <laughs> so I had some inspiration behind me, and you know, sometimes when you have to wait too long, you get bored and crazy ideas. So <laughs> I immediately saw your your face like this. Exactly, I could understand you. And here is uh, you were in Maastricht as you started to be the teacher. It was uh, a op like the welcoming you, or you had some special event for being the teacher. No, exactly. Uh, I mean, I still remember your welcoming. I think you played exactly the same, no? In Brussels? Yes. So, yeah, I was, they actually asked me to do exactly the same in Maastricht, which mm -hmm. was great. 
um, you know, because, you know, often you come to school, but you don't always know the colleagues. So it was really like a wonderful opportunity, like for the whole school to be there. Uh, and yeah, I just, you know, I was walking in Maastricht and I didn't expect to run into me like that. So. <laughs> That's wonderful. And here's also another poster. It is in Vienna at the Golden Saal of the Concertgebouw. Uh, it's in, in uh, uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Musikverein. In Musikverein. Uh, so what did you play here? This was actually a concert um, with Michael Kohlmeier. He's a I mean, an amazing writer in, uh, in mm -hmm. Austria. So they asked me to, you know, accompany his text with music. So it was a combination of, um, you know, storytelling and, and music. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. So you could you could choose whatever pieces you want to do? Yes, I would have read the text before to, to mm -hmm. see you know, what would fit if it, you know, would, you know, add something to the text, okay. the meaning of, of it. Um, yeah, so, but I was free, yeah, for sure. I was free. That's lovely. And here is this Miss McDonald. It's in the United States. Yeah, it's exactly in uh, in Naples, actually. We, we've been really lucky to go with the orchestra, I think, three years in a row to mm -hmm. Naples. And I had absolutely no idea that, um, that uh, Miss McDonald was living there big parts of the year. And all of a sudden, I get this uh, question from Linda Rollo saying Miss McDonald wants to come to the concert and I thought in Naples, Florida. So and, I, and then we have been meeting every year when we came. But it was really, really wonderful. Mm, that's great. And here, this is really in the United States when we were last year at the competition with our favorite um, contestant, Wujin. She was really wonderful. And yes. here it's uh, you somewhere with your family. Yeah, that's what I found. There is your brother, the, the tallest one in the, the blue shirt. And tell yeah. us more, please. Well, yeah, the tallest one in the back is my brother. He's, um, and then in front of him is my grandfather. I'm right next to him on the left. On the, his right is my brother's wife, who looks exactly like me and is Spanish. <laughs> um, and my mom and dad are next to me. And next to my dad is my sister with the purple purple jacket so and then the rest oh yeah and then behind her is her husband and other than that it's like people of the community because I was awarded um, a prize um, like for the this cultural prize of the town I come from which was also a very nice memory great here's also another picture a little bit smaller where it's your parents and this yes. is you and it's your well, that's, my, that's private life, Jana. That was my previous boyfriend. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to show up as well. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's that's a long time ago. That was like in 2011 or something. So it's really, yeah. <laughs> my mom. It's your mother. It's your wonderful mother. And here it's uh, you as a soloist with the Brussels Philharmonic. Yes, where I, I look, my arm looks like I just came from boxing class. <laughs> oh my God. And you have not? <laughs> you have not? No, but I've received a lot of comments because I, I, I don't like when people give a hand and it's you feel it's not meant. So when I give people a hand, I really want to, you know, show that I, I mean, it, it's not it's not fake, it's sincere. So I, I wanted to shake his hand, but it, at that moment, the picture is taken and it shows surprisingly a lot of muscles. No, but you are strong enough to show these muscles. That's great. <laughs> it's great. Not that strong. It means like good, you know, that's good. And here it's a picture of the harp column when you had the title. What was this? Um, well, yeah, there was also another beautiful surprise that they made me the cover of harp column. I think it was a, mm -hmm. an interview just when I started in, in Vienna. I remember having mm -hmm. a long conversation with Kim Rowe, who was in Vienna. Um, and, you know, just talking about how life, just what we had today in the beginning, how life was, how, you know, the trial year went, repertoire, life in Vienna. So it was mm -hmm. really nice uh, interview with her, yes. 
That's lovely. And now I would like to ask you because you were supposed to do this these master classes yeah. this year. They have been postponed or they have been done online finally. How did this no, happen? Sadly, sadly the decision was made pretty quickly that you know it wouldn't be able to take place. Um mm -hmm. so it will be postponed. Um it's not sure yet if it can happen next year or the year after, but we will we will okay. see. So okay. so many things got cancelled, also the Felix got a four got cancelled you know so yeah i think you certainly got a lot of concerts cancelled as well but i hope that most of them were postponed well yeah that you know it's good and bad because of mm -hmm. course i'm really happy that they will be postponed but that makes the next year even even more busy <laughs> yeah <laughs> just to find time that that would be yeah, a little bit easy because you know normally you plan seasons or two seasons in advance and yeah. it's but now everybody needs to fit in things like exactly. for the people which was already planned, so it's not always so easy to find. Yeah. To find I have here this beautiful picture. You have really great photographer who is taking the pictures of you. It's really beautiful. Oh, They're very really special. In Vienna. Yeah. It's in Vienna. This is yeah. She's her name is Nancy Horowitz. She's a she's a, a viola player, I think, uh, and she does a lot of uh, yeah musical portraits so i think she's yeah she's always very creative um so yeah that was wonderful, was wonderful. Actually good for the harp and clarinet cd yeah here it's uh, you as a after the concert making the signature on the post of yeah, the that's Excuse not me. prague if i'm not mistaken it's in prague yeah that's maybe possible yeah, yeah I think so at the at the you know the, the the festival, wonderful festival that Barbora is organizing. I think exactly. it was my CD came out just before. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. And here, this is picture also is beautiful. <laughs> the same photographer, yeah, she's very creative. Yeah. yeah. I just and had to get on. <laughs> interviews, of course, it was probably now. After, is it the recent interview after the prize, the classic? Yeah. This was an interview right after the recording with Pahu for Warner Classics to have like uh, you know interviews for promo promo material. So that yeah. was in Berlin actually. Yeah. And this is a nice picture, really a shot of you as a really natural smile, which is beautiful. It's That's at the open air concert in, in Vienna, yeah, the Schönbrunn concert, which is mm -hmm. either too hot or too cold. <laughs> <laughs> and here's with another. First class uh, winner of the USA. Exactly. Wonderful memories with her. I mean, I've been going to teach in Aspen for a few years now already, and she was a student at that time. But mm -hmm. she's, I mean, she's amazing. And we've, we've shared like two, I think, two beautiful summers together in Aspen. Yeah. Yeah. It was also a comment of her that she will miss you, that it was four weeks and that she will really miss you there. Yeah, we really, really had a beautiful time. And I heard her, mm -hmm. we heard her recital in the USA our competition now in July and she's I was so impressed to see her you know mm. grow and her progress I mean she's mm. a wonderful position absolutely yes here it's uh, you also at the some master class as there is a poster yes and I actually I think Agnieszka who is organizing it the the blonde which is next to me she ju just appeared in the chat so she will be happy to see this <laughs> see oh this. how lovely that makes me happy and uh, now this is also a beautiful picture where was this one this was in bogota last june um and i played the rota concerto there with eve abel um mm -hmm. yeah so also wonderful it, it, it's nice how they captured somehow the moment after after the yeah, so good. Yeah, good memories. I mean, it's hard to imagine one year ago to be so far away from home, and now it's even hard to cross a border in Europe. So Not possibly. Yeah. This is also from the same picture. Absolutely. Yeah, so we had uh, two concerts, I think, and this is one after the other concerts mm -hmm. together. Wonderful. And here is uh, this probably when Boss Kim was in uh, in Vienna. Is it from the time when she was doing the interview with you? It might have been, but I also see like the two harpers of the Cleveland Orchestra next to me. They came to play. Uh, well, Kim lived in Vienna for a while, um, and I think they came to visit, or they, they had a concert in Musikverein. So we all met up. So so she um, she was there as well. Mm -hmm. and, back. <laughs> <laughs> and he met with a wonderful girl who is really wonderful student. It's Johnny. She said uh, that was after the Godefroy competition, actually, where I was in the jury and 
after mm -hmm. the feedback. Yeah, she's a wonderful player, absolutely. Yes. And here's you again. It's again from the same concert as we said before. Yeah, exactly. And here's you before or after the New Year concert, right? Yeah, because you know I'm high up in my hand. It's true. Like the the part of Fledermaus, which many people don't know. When we play the New Year's concert in the evening, there's another opera performance. So you literally have a few hours, three or four hours, to have a meal, and then it goes back to to the opera. So I I, I think yeah, one one evening I felt like capturing that. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Here is another picture with the conductor. It's beautiful. Here is with Ladislav. Is it Ladislav? That's Ladislav, yes. So that was the Scala, I think, in my land. Um, so he's our, yeah, he's our, our first guy that we ask if, if any of us cannot, uh, you know, cannot travel, because we cannot always travel the two of us. Because also, if we travel, the opera continues. Yeah. So um, yes, yeah. <laughs> baby, there. So here it's with Nancy Ellen. Also, the picture. It's she's going to be actually now in Tuesday. Uh, as a guest of the great yeah she's amazing too we you know it's really nice that you know we, we we share the summers in aspen so i do the first four weeks and then she comes but we almost always miss each other so it's like mm -hmm. never really overlapping and last year we met one day and i think this was picture was in vienna when she was there with the new york philharmonic yes also another yeah um, that was in aspen yes exactly yeah. <laughs> here we are I mean, I just jumped now. Oops, I just lost this now, where I am now at the moment. Yeah, sorry. Now, here. This is a nice picture, but it's maybe a longer time ago. That's from, I think, 2009. Yeah. yeah. When, when the time when I still had holidays. <laughs> yes, when did you, did you know what holidays means? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've experienced it once. <laughs> Yeah. Here is also with great people, with Katrin Finch. Yeah, and with Helen. Uh, I think she's a beautiful and woman. Here, tell me, what is this? Is it just a picture or did you really play the concert? Oh, this is just for picture. <laughs> uh, it's actually a beautiful building in the area where I come from. Uh, it's like an old mine uh, building where they have mm -hmm. all these old, um, how you, I don't know how you call it, machineries. Um, mm -hmm. and somehow... It was a colorful ID for pictures. <laughs> yeah. And here are your wonderful parents. Yeah. That's, just tell me what are, or tell us what your parents are doing. What is their occupation? Um, well, my parents now both are retired. Um, mm -hmm. And my father has always worked in a bank. And my mom, actually, she studied languages. Um, and she, she stopped working um, when she got the children. So she basically had the best job in, her, in the world and sacri basically sacrificed her whole life for us. I think mm -hmm. if, if she wouldn't have stayed home, we wouldn't have been able to do all the things um, that we did. So I'm, I'm really grateful. So she really yeah, had wonderful parents. And they were very music lovers as well. So that's... Well, they, yeah, they, they just supported us in every way they could. Mm -hmm. And always, they never pushed us, that's for sure, mm -hmm. but they always wanted to... To, to make sure we got the best out of what we could do. So, mm. yeah. And here is also, is, I don't know if it's just your student or who is now here with you. This is a picture of a final concert in Aspen. Uh, and in Aspen, the system is like that, that in the festival orchestra, the, the principal teacher plays with a student. So that was uh, mm -hmm. Abigail, I think. Um, who, yeah, we were playing together in the last concert. Lovely. And here's Annaline, fun in Annaline, <laughs> making jokes. Thank you for getting out the best pictures. Yeah. I also in Aspen, um, rolling the harp back um, with a lot of excitement. Which you will need to do now. I'm very sorry that it takes a little bit. I have a few more pictures. I just don't want to miss them because I'm sure that everybody wants to see it. This is with the clarinetis, as I was mentioning at the That's beginning. It. Yeah. So we, we recorded the. A Schumann and Schubert CD with uh, for harp and clarinet. So that was the mm -hmm. uh, video recorded at the at the opera in Vienna for for the for the CD. Exactly. Beautiful. And this is uh, from the when you got the prize or where was it? Because you have the same dress on you. Yeah, I should be careful about that. I don't have you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's not the same occasion. Uh, it was actually, it's actually with Kalevi Aho, which is an amazing uh, composer, uh, mm -hmm. and he. I, I recorded his double concerto for English horn and harp, 
Um, and then I asked him to write a piece for harp and strings, and that was actually the premiere in Belgium. He's a really amazing composer. Fantastic. Do you play it often? Uh, yes, I've actually performed it a few times already. Um, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I had the same idea. Like I wanted to do the Debussy dances, but then in the same setting to have mm -hmm. something different, which is beautiful. Wonderful. Here's a nice picture with the nice lighting. I was surprised that Kamak does only also this kind of harp because for, from the first point of view, I saw that it is a, a hongacha. Yes, it looks similar. I mean, that's a, probably a question you you should ask them. But it, it's a beautiful harp that they brought for the festival in Vienna. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it was that's the opening recital, so I was wonderful with their support. Yeah, and here it's you again as a soloist with the orchestra. You might not remember what did you play, or maybe you do. Yeah, it's a, a Glier concerto in Chechen in, uh, in in Poland, in what, the new beautiful concert hall, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Here's also another. That's my brother. No, that's not my brother. No, that's in Qatar. Sorry, that's in Qatar. <laughs> also Glier. Clear concert. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, in the New Year concert. It was the last New Year's concert that I played exactly. There was a picture of the Instagram team. Um, but like we were all like helping behind the scenes to capture some moments. Um, yeah. Beautiful. It's really nice pictures. So totally beautiful. This is nice. <laughs> like we, yeah, we have a lot of pictures from that concert, and we, we people actually thought we we got married together because <laughs> with, with the flowers afterwards, it really looks like it. But she's an amazing. She's Marina Piccinini. She's a, an amazing flute player and a very good friend. And we, like you can see, we always have a good time. <laughs> um, and yeah. here it's you. It was in television, no? This one. It was a yes a, a television interview belgian tv where they asked to play which is not always easy um, i know i know and here it's uh, you as uh, before the in the break of the orchestra project it is the philharmonic probably i think this must be like in 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 japan or in china i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you get also the kamax on in the tour or you bring this is, the line and Healy. This is line and Healy that we play um, uh-huh so this was this is definitely from a tour, I think. I see. I see. And when you travel, do you bring your own harps or do you borrow the harps on the place? No, we always travel with all our own instruments. Yeah, for sure. I think it's really important to. Here is also from the same concert as we mentioned before, probably because it's the same harp. And here is you as a great lady on beach. Yeah. <laughs> and here. Wow, everybody really admires you. It's so wonderful. We just have fun. We just have good times. I mean, that's important, <laughs> no? Whatever we do, how busy we get, but just to remember always have good times. Absolutely. This is also a gorgeous picture of you. This was in Poland, also from Agnieszka. This was in Bangkok. And you, you came from, from the trip? This is in Bangkok still. I, I In February, which, I, I, if I think back now, it's crazy that I was still able to go. Yeah, here you are giving master classes, as you are really very active as a teacher as well, which is great. And here, yeah, this is also a beautiful picture. Carnegie Hall, yeah, with the orchestra. Mm -hmm. Smiling to Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> That's Aspen, yeah, where we try to combine music and sports. <laughs> and here it's a picture from last year of the competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really pleased about because it's like early morning and we all have like small eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this memories, yeah. This is another one, and here is the picture of three of us with Sivan as well. <laughs> really, really beautiful memories. It was a good time mm -hmm. that we had. Absolutely, yeah. it's one year it's exactly now. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, this is an interview with a colleague that was just. It was the first day I got back to Vienna after the quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just to talk a little bit about it and the orchestra. Wonderful, wonderful. And this is uh, again making jokes with the flower. <laughs> that was, yeah, I played the first time with my orchestra, um, the Mozart Concerto in Salzburg. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you do also interview or someone interviews you? How and does it? Very, uh, it was a concert with him and he's a very famous uh, actor and TV presenter in Belgium. And it was a new series of him that he you know it's a concert but in combination with with 
you know, a talk and it, people somehow really appreciate what they, they get to know more about about your life. So it's not, and then you don't have to talk, you're answering questions, which is way better. <laughs> And this is also a very special picture. I just wonder how did you make it? Did you, it was turned or did you really lay on something? No, I really lay on something and I'm keeping my legs up. My my stomach was hurting like crazy. <laughs> I didn't have good enough muscles. Yeah, it was a, um, an amazing photographer, but he had this idea that he would make me fly. So if you flip it, it's like you, you fly. So I, I had to hold that for quite a while, which was not easy. Uh, yeah, so you get results like this. <laughs> but also how the harp kept in this position. There was yep. someone... No, that's okay. You can lay the harp like that. But then there was like a little chair, but very, very tiny that I have to, had to balance myself. So wow. You go with the flow. <laughs> also another interview for the television. Yeah, so that was a... Yeah. yeah. And this is Annalene again moving the harp. It looks like you are moving the harp all the time. I'm, I'm so sorry for this. This is for pictures, Diana. Only for pictures. <laughs> Only for pictures. <laughs> but it's our job as well, yeah. That's very true. Here is a wonderful picture with uh, Jean, Jean Michel. No, Jean Michel. Uh, Marie Claire. Marie Claire. Marie Claire Jamais. Yeah. The French is always hard to pronounce. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's wonderful too. It was in um, a festival in France a few years ago that I was able to meet her again after a long time. And she looks great. She looks great. It's yeah, fun. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. This I also brought in because this is not a photo. This is a picture. You can say a little bit about that. Well, it's a painting. It's amazing because I have a, a, a wonderful American student uh, who studies with me in Maastricht. And she had a job here in Maastricht, you know, to make for a living. And um, But she's also very creative. That, but then when the lockdown started and she... You know was without income she she thought maybe i can find a creative way to you know to gain some money and and to do also what i love and then she said commissions are open so i said well i am happy to you know take commission and you can do whatever you want i didn't commission a picture of myself but she chose this picture that she found online and i have to say i was absolutely so impressed by by her you know gifts because if you look at the strings if you look at the mechanics uh, the mm -hmm. shadow the the lightning it's it's absolutely fantastic i actually got it today in real life she brought it by because i hadn't oh. seen it in real life yet but so she's yeah i think you know even the crisis is hard i think it brought out many good things and, mm -hmm. and many new opportunities for people so she's she's been dealing with it wonderfully it's amazing talent really it's fantastic and this is also your picture with with the quartet this was a, a prize winner's concert after the Lille Laskin in Salgavo in Paris, which was a really beautiful memory for me, very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and here it's the last picture with Miss McDonald again. Also in Naples, yes. <laughs> good yeah, time. That's wonderful. And also, before we will say goodbye, is there anything what you want to really uh, say? Because your life is so rich and you have really made so experience, so many experiences. Is there something what you really would like to mention maybe as an experience, which it's for you the most important for your life? So oh, it's, it's difficult because, um, I mean, what I've learned is that you know, everybody is different and also teaching you have to bring out the best or, you know, you everybody, every individual has his own qualities. So I'm doing competition and masterclass is really important just to see what's out there. But I think it's, it's so important to always remember your strength and to not to compare to learn yet, but not to compare out of competition, but in a positive way and that everybody whatever you do is because you do it to fulfill yourself and not to impress someone else not to because that never really works i think if you do something out of your own strength and believe in it and not occupy with other things you will get the most out of life and mm -hmm. um i just hope i mean I'm, i feel really really lucky with many things that i was able to do um but i I'm, i think if, if you it's good to, to work towards goals as good as you can, but also not expect too much because expectations bring sometimes, you know, mostly uh, unhappiness. So just, you know, to, to stay within yourself, with, with, within your mm -hmm. own quality, and then things come naturally. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's very clever. I, 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 I wish really we can speak 
hours and I'm so sorry now already. I, see the no, I actually, the, yeah, I, I probably missed the opportunity to bring the harp to school, but just, uh, so I will just wake up earlier. <laughs> um, I just want to really show all the people who are with us again, just not to miss their comments and their greetings to you, which is so lovely of all of you. And I really, I thank you so much for being here. I think that there is a question here. So... What is the most annoying question that people ask you about that? Uh, how much it costs, actually? You know, you can you can you can finish a recital. You know, you gave the best of yourself for an hour, and then people come to you, and it's like, so how much does it cost? And then, you know, it's frustrating because that should not you know, what it's about. But yeah, people are interested in the different things. That's very true. Yeah, yeah here are some more. Uh, it's really thank you so much for everyone and yeah here when I, read, I think that it was then I showed your picture all three of you maybe that was the comment to that <laughs> at that moment yeah and Annalyn just only because if you can still answer only the question what is your project now in the in the coming months if there is anything you can really prepare for for the future yeah the thing is that I um I'm I have a new CD project planned uh, at beginning of 21, which mm -hmm. <laughs> requires, I mean, I work best with deadlines. So I already gave the list of pieces. It's a solo project, uh, but I have to still make the transcriptions, which is very clever. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, I'm working on transcriptions for, um, for that CD um, and prepared as well as I can then to record it. So I'm definitely busy, but it's good that it's a little bit more time now. Um, so I can really focus on that. So there's Let's always move. something to do, it's never boring. Can you little open the secret? What kind of project is it? Or is there any topic yeah. of it? Uh, no, it's a, it's a little bit of reflection of, of the life that I have in Vienna, which is both opera and symphonic. So I'm trying to bring a bit of repertoire from both worlds, uh, but then mm -hmm. from solo harp. So we'll see what that will become. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. And is there any concert coming now which you can really do already? Is there any concerts possible to do now live? Uh, well, I just came from Vienna where we had four live concerts with the Philharmonic, but only for 100 people audience, which is very sad, of course, but it's changing. Mm -hmm. um, and the Salzburg Festival in the summer will take place so mm -hmm. far. Um, so yes, um, I will go to Salzburg end of July and be there until end of August. So where we have, um, you know, projects with the, with the orchestra. So this is for sure. Solo wise, I will have to wait and see because a lot of things in September got canceled. Um, so the next thing would be in November after a big tour to Asia. That's normally supposed to happen. So we, I think we're all waiting and seeing. And happens. you go to Asia because our trip was canceled in the autumn. Oh, they will decide. They will wait and see until mm -hmm. end of August. Mm -hmm. so. Well, good luck that everything works and that we can finally really uh, yeah. hear you also. Yeah, I feel like somehow that everybody can go back. And also, I think you know, without too many insecurities in life, because it's difficult for a lot of people Absolutely. now. Absolutely. We have nice uh, last comment here, or well, not last? There are coming more of the comments. So, just that you will you will hear them of course you can see all the comments there you can of course also see the the interview and uh, see it and uh, listen to it and uh, read all the comments afterwards it will be saved in youtube and in facebook as well and of course i'm very very happy that we had annaline today that she made time even it was very short and i'm so sorry that it was longer than i promised you no, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it I soon sadly i have to go yes but i'm um, thank you so much for having me for, for for the invitation and for doing everything that you do i know it's crazy time consuming so it's wonderful that you give so much back to the heart world so thank you for that it was really great to see you, Annalyn. Take care. I wish you good luck and a bravo for everything that you are doing. I'm really, really very proud of you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank the you. Bye-bye. Take bye -bye. care.